Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. And Art and I are with our favorite medical doctor, Dr. Liz, MD. <laughs> Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Hi, Dr. Liz. Likewise. Thank you. You know, I was thinking just the other day, <laughs> I, and I know, I know John finds that hard to believe sometimes, because <laughs> could he really be thinking when those words come out of his mouth? But I was watching The Wizard of Oz. Oh. And during one of the commercials, they had one of these things that came up right after Ray Boldra was singing, If I Only Had a Brain. Uh, it was one of these uh, 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 memory uh, pills. Well, I've been taking blah, blah, blah for seven years. And uh, people tell me that I, uh, uh, um, people tell me that I, oh, <laughs> that I remember things better. Uh, so uh, brain health and uh, is uh, very much on our minds uh, because of, uh, uh, as people age, they tend to forget things. Uh, I have a cousin, for instance, who uh, always for years, and he's about my age now, but even for 30 years ago, he would come visit us and he would put his keys in the refrigerator, mm. okay, so that he'd always know where to look for them when he goes home because he was always losing his keys. Uh, <laughs> and it works. Yeah, it does work. Is there something about brain health that inevitably affects people as they get older? Such an excellent question. I would like to take issue with the word inevitable. There are definitely changes that happen as time goes by. You know, I say as time goes by instead of as we get older, because nobody likes any of the words like older or silver or mature or any of that. So anyhow, as time goes by, there are definitely changes that happen in the body, uh, but definitely not inevitable. All right, we're, we're going to go with that. That's why we're here having these conversations is so that we can have actionable information that people can use to go out and improve their health. And, and you also know that I like to tell people to, to get rid of the word, the J word, the word just. Yes. Right? Like you're just getting older. Yeah. So, so one of the major topics that I talk about often that happens as time goes by is the hormone decline that happens with various hormones. And so I thought I would just mention today a little bit of the major hormones that affect brain sharpness, right? And these are really not in any particular order. So I will say the first one for women <clears throat> is estrogen. Estrogen is a, the dominant hormone in the first half of the menstrual cycle. So when a woman is before menopause, <clears throat> excuse me, and she's having her regular cycles, estrogen is more predominant in the first half and then progesterone takes over in the second half of the cycle. And then when she's on her period, everything drops off. And so when a woman is heading into menopause or when she's in perimenopause, there's a lot of fluctuations in both of these hormones. So estrogen in particular has been studied and shown to affect memory, cognitive function, okay, and brain function overall. So estrogen is a, a very important hormone for brain sharpness uh, for women in particular. Testosterone helps women and men, okay. Now, a lot of people don't even know that women have testosterone, and we've had several conversations about that, so there are other videos mm. that people can take a look at. Uh, so women definitely have testosterone, and it does help with the, that kind of mental brain sharpness. And then, of course, for men, men's testosterone levels peak in your 20s, maybe around age 30, and then a steady decline after that, one at least 1% decrease in testosterone levels as time goes by every year. But is, there, but is there anything, uh, but men also have a, 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 a estrogen, right? Yes, when, that's yeah. correct. Okay. Yeah, so it's important for women to have some testosterone and it's important for men to have at least a little bit of estrogen. That's absolutely true. And that's more for the heart protection. Ah. But for the brain, testosterone is so, so important. It's really the central hormone for men. 
So for women, it's a little more evenly spread out between these various hormones that we're talking about. But for men, testosterone helps everything. So not just the brain sharpness, which is what we're focusing on today, but also mood, energy level, all affected by testosterone, particularly for men. And last but not least will be the thyroid hormones, right? The thyroid gland that sits right here in the middle of the neck, okay, just below the Adam's apple. That is going to be the place where most thyroid hormones are made. However, there's conversion into the active thyroid hormone. That happens all over the body. That happens in the liver. It happens in the muscle. And thyroid hormone has to convert into the active form in order to really help the brain. All right, so people with low thyroid function or low thyroid hormone levels are going to, in addition to feeling tired, they're going to also have the brain fog, the cognitive uh, difficulties. That's what a lot of people report by the time they are getting to see me and, and get checked out. Those are kind of the major hormones. A lot of, there's some other factors that we're going to talk about, lifestyle factors, but those are kind of the main hormones that decline as we get older. So, yeah. uh, are you have have studies shown that um, uh, that the thyroid hormone decrease in thyroid hormone contributes more or less than decrease in uh, testosterone and uh, uh, estrogen to to brain health. Do, uh, what's the importance between the three of them? That's a wonderful question. I have not seen data that com that's looking at that head to head, but I would say that, okay, so thyroid health is influenced by adrenal health, okay? And testosterone, in addition to helping with brain function and brain sharpness helps with energy and productivity, okay? And so, and women have less testosterone than men do in general by a factor of like 10. Men have 10 times as much testosterone as women do on average comparing, all right? And so for women, having less testosterone means they're going to have more work for their adrenal glands to do to keep them going. So people feel tired and they push through. And this is a problem. This is a problem. Okay, so when women push through, they're really putting a lot of pressure on their adrenals to keep them going. Okay, mm -hmm. so thyroid, low thyroid function is at least considered to be eight times as common in women as it is in men. Uh -huh. For women, maybe the thyroid is gonna be more important versus, it's, it's important in men, but I would, I would give testosterone first place in importance for men, and I would give it, I would give thyroid first place for women. For me, it's a tie, because I always look at all of these hormones. In so, yeah. so, so, um, because we know that you don't like the J word, just, right. or the phrase, just inevitable, making the J word even worse. Uh, <laughs> so, so for those of us who uh, uh, want to. Uh, latch on to the Dr. Liz MD, it's not just inevitable. Are there things that we can do to uh, help strengthen our ability to uh, stay mentally sharp? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, as you know, I am a big fan of hormone replenishment. It can be done safely, and that's definitely something to pursue. Other lifestyle changes that people can make that is definitely known to improve cognitive function. Number one, and this might be bad news for some people, and, and these are also really not in order, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna list them as one, two, and three, and then maybe I'll consider which I would consider the most important. I can't decide right now. One of them is reducing sugar. Lowering really? sugar, controlling sugar in your blood, getting it checked out. Fasting blood sugar, ideally, should be 86 or lower. Now that's not what the lab report says. The lab report says 99 or 100. 
All right. So your doctor, if your level is 99, your doctor might tell you your sugar is fine. So it's definitely worth getting checked out to the point that dementia is being called by some people diabetes type 3. Wow. It's that important. Sugar impairs brain function. All right. There's just no question about that, at least at this point in time. And there's no question about that in my mind. That's one of the three. Another one is sleep. We've talked about that before. Very important. It's incredible what I read and learn of what our bodies do while we are sleeping, especially in terms of brain cleanup. Hmm. All right. Literally, one of the people I read her works, her writings, she talks about like a, like those car washes where the scrubbers come in and shh, and start spraying <laughs> and soaking yeah. up and cleaning. The brushes, yeah. Yeah, you can have that image. That is what's happening. And if you're not getting enough sleep, you are not getting a good brain cleaning that needs to be done on a daily basis. And the third that I have for us today is exercise. That's of course. Absolutely, yeah. So, and it makes sense, right? You're moving your body. You're getting more blood flow. That's going to get more oxygen to the brain. Hmm. Right? Right the large muscle groups, and that connects the neurology, the, the, the nerve connections between the brain out to the extremities. So as we're exercising, we are improving our brain function. It stimulates more synapses, more connections between the brain cells, and even stimulates development of new brain cells. Exercise does that. Wow. So I have a, a, a question for you. Uh, you can see that um, uh, these uh, magic cures uh, seems like every three or four months, a whole new series of things for getting rid of rashes on your arms or improving uh, 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 brain health uh, seem to flood the airwaves. Uh, as do, by the way, uh, out of warranty uh, uh, insurance for your cars. There seems to be two competing people on it right now. Oh yeah, and all the Medicare supplements between Joe Namath <laughs> and uh, who's a guy uh, 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 from uh, one of the TV shows. They're constantly saying, you know, now's the time to get the better this and better that. So all these things that are being advertised on TV, these uh, magic pills for improving brain health. Uh, do you have any comment on that? Mm -hmm. Well, my comment is that none of them are going to replace getting enough sleep, reducing sugar, and moving your body. If you are not getting enough sleep, if you're eating too much sugar, if you are in too many back-to-back -to -back Zoom meetings all day long and not moving around, I do not think that we're going to see a pill that is going to reverse the effects of all of that, unfortunately. I'm not opposed to those. I don't even mind people trying them out. However, it's it's a little bit tricky in terms of how to study those, but I don't think we're gonna see them outweigh those choices that we can make on a daily basis that are really actually gonna make a difference. Yeah, and reducing sugar, getting sleep, and exercising more, the price is right for all of those. That's right. You don't have to go to the pharmacy to get them. That's right. Well, That's I think that this is going to deserve uh, coming back and visiting uh, uh, this whole thing on brain health from things that we can control uh, so that it's not Good. just inevitable, but it's uh, listen to Dr. News. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.